As is typical when you talk about functions, one of the things to talk about in terms of functions would be the domain of a function. So as a reminder, when we are dealing with a function of one variable, y equals f of x, the domain of f would be a subset of the x-axis, and the x-axis represents all real numbers. So when it comes to a function of two variables, z equals f of x, y, the domain is going to be a subset of R2, which would be the xy plane. Now, typically, when we are representing this domain, there are going to be two different ways to do it. One would be using set notation, and one would be to actually sketch the region within the xy plane. We're going to do both in these examples. Now, with that in mind, all of our rules for domain from back in our old algebra classes still hold true. So rules for domain. If you have a radical with an even index, so we'll say um, some expression under here, u, where n is even, it is necessarily true that u has to be greater than or equal to zero. If you have something involving a denominator, then it is guaranteed to be true that uh, u is not equal to zero. That usually leads to either holes within uh, a domain for a function of one variable or within the xy plane that would lead to some likely dashed curves. Uh, if you have the any sort of logarithm, usually natural log tends to show up pretty frequently, then whatever you have would have to be greater than zero. The argument of a logarithm must be a positive number. And also there are certain rules for inverse trig functions. Um, rather than listing them all, I'm going to ask you to reference back to the old uh, inverse trig functions. We'll do one of those as an example in just a moment. So I wanted to work through a couple of examples of finding domains of functions of multiple variables. So we'll start here. f of x is equal to the natural log of 4 minus x squared minus y squared. So with that in mind, we do have a natural log involved. So that means that the thing inside the natural log, 4 minus x squared minus y squared, is going to have to be greater than 0. Next, if we subtract 4 from both sides, this would be negative x squared minus y squared is greater than negative 4. And then multiplying both sides by negative 1 would give us x squared plus y squared, reverse the sign, is less than 4. Now with that in mind, if we wanted to express the domain of this function, we could say that this is the set of all ordered pairs, x, y, such that x squared plus y squared is less than 4. <clears throat> now to graph this within the xy plane, typically what we would do is start with the boundary function. For the boundary function, we replace any inequality sign with an equal sign. Excuse me. Oh boy. That was a good one. So the boundary function in this case would be x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. That boundary function would be a circle with the center at the ordered pair 0, 0 and a radius equal to 2. Now because the actual function that we're dealing with or the actual region that we're dealing with is strictly less than 4, we're going to treat that as a dotted region or dashed region to indicate that we are not actually equal to that value. So we'll make a nice little circle of radius 2 centered at the origin and this will serve as the boundary for our function. Now typically what we would do after this is decide is the actual domain going to be the inside of the circle or the outside of the circle. Usually the most straightforward way to do that would be to grab a point like 0, 0, that's not on the boundary, and plug it into the original inequality. If the inequality becomes true, you've selected the appropriate region. If the inequality becomes false, then you are not in the correct region. So when we test 0, 0, we will get a very straightforward 0 squared plus 0 squared is less than 4 by plugging it into the given region. This would be true, which means that the region that contains 0, 0 is the appropriate region 
for the domain. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, as I've indicated with many, many drawings throughout my years of teaching. So, this would be the domain of the given function. If you wanted to come up with a graph, well, that is an entirely different uh, kind of thing that we'll cover in just a little while. I wanted to try out one more because I mentioned that I would bring this up. That is f of x is equal to, or excuse me, f of xy is equal to the arc sine of x plus y. So the rule for the arc sine function is that whatever you have as the input to an arc sine function needs to be within the range of the sine function. The range of the sine function goes from negative one up to positive one. We can really break this down into two inequalities. What we're saying is that x plus y is greater than or equal to negative one and x plus y is less than or equal to one. Now, if we do as we did before, the boundary curves, would be what we get by replacing the inequality signs with an equal sign. So this would be x plus y is equal to negative 1, and x plus y is equal to 1. Now, both of these are going to be relatively straightforward to graph. So with that in mind, I'll go ahead and draw an example of the Cartesian plane here. For x plus y is equal to negative 1, I would recommend graphing this by finding the two intercepts. And that would be x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 1. So x-intercept at negative 1, 0, and a y-intercept at 0, negative 1. And we'll draw the straight line that passes through those two points. should probably keep a straight edge close by for drawing these lines. That would be really convenient. Additionally, we could do the same thing for x plus y is equal to 1. That would have a y-intercept up at 0, 1, and an x-intercept over at 1, 0. And once again, we would be drawing a straight line that passes through these two points. So we get this pair of parallel lines. Now, we're looking for the region that's in between these two lines, as was indicated above. However, if you did want to verify which one of these three regions is correct, you could always grab a point from within a certain region plug it in and verify that you do wind up getting a true statement. So the domain of this function is going to be this region that exists between these two parallel lines. Now if we wanted to represent this domain in set notation, it would simply be a matter of saying that the domain is the set of all ordered pairs x, y, such that x plus y is between negative 1 and positive 1. Basically just take whatever the domain rule was up here and toss it into this fancy set notation down here. And that'll do it. 